morning, Mount Mariah. Good morning. Good morning. I stand before you on behalf of our cardiac disparity. We will walk this um, next month. For the first time, it's going to be at the end of the month. So it will be the 31st of Saturday at Miramar Lake at 8 o'clock? 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. So please meet us out there. It will be a, it is 8 o'clock. But yes, because the earlier, the better. So it is 8 o'clock. So we'll meet you there at Miramar Lake on the 31st. Um, in front of the Beth Dormitories. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. I just knew it was going to be more announcements than that, but. I just want to come before you on behalf of being the co-chairman of your pulpit committee for Mount Mariah Christian Church. Amen. Thank you for all, all that turned in their surveys. And I'm proudly would like to announce that our announcement has been finalized through our committee. And what the announcement is is what we're getting ready to put out to the community. We get ready to put out to you as the members that you can share of anyone that is looking to be a pastor of Mount Moriah Christian Church. Amen? Amen. Amen? So you'll be seeing it on, you'll be hearing it on K Pray, you'll hear it and you'll see it in the Voice and Viewpoint, you'll see it on our own web page, you'll see it on our Facebook page. All, right. all I ask, all that God asks is that you share. Yes. Share the goodness that Jesus has given to you. Yes. Whether you're walking a mile to do it, whether you're using a, a, a click of your thumb to do it, share the word of Jesus Christ. Amen. And continue to pray for our church as we move toward looking for our new pastor. Amen. Amen. And please don't forget to continue to pray for our current pastor Amen. and his family and his wife. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's how we praise the Lord here. Hallelujah. God is so good. He just continued to keep us moving. I just want to announce the uh, Bethel trip, which is August the 11th. We will have one service that morning. Which the, that's the second Sunday in August. So come join us for our annual Los Angeles Beth. Baptist Church trip. They feed you. You know, they feed you, but yet still we ride up on the bus and we have fellowship on the bus. And some people like to stop at McDonald's, but I don't know why. But anyway, because you don't have food waiting for you. So anyway, we will only have our 9 a.m. service and we will leave our, here at 11 a.m. Okay? So and if you can invite others, and if you can, give a donation to help toward the cost of the bus because Mama Wright is always available and making plans for us to be able to do things. Amen. Amen. And I just wanted to piggyback on the cardiac disparities because the uh, walk is one thing, but we got to remember that we need to be able to control our blood pressures and our cholesterol intake. We're doing blood pressures here today, and this is the fourth Sunday, so we get a chance to check your blood pressure for you on our new kiosk, right over there. Amen. So we will be doing them again after the 9 a.m. service. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm here on behalf of the men's ministry. So we're getting ready to go on our retreat September 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Um, our theme is, um, uh, excuse me, uh, be a man God's way. Uh, it's from 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14. 
I see a lot of capable men here. I see that uh, we have a nice bond uh, of all men here. But uh, when we go up to the mountain and when, when we, we fellowship together and, and, and come together and, uh, to do God's work, it, it, it just makes us uh, more closer. It, it bonds right. us. It fills us up. It, it re rejuvenates us and come back down and, and do God's work. All so right. I, encourage, I encourage each, each one of you to come. It, it's, it's, a, it's an experience every single time. Hey, Thank you. Well, it's $149. Uh, you can see me. Uh, uh, you can Rufus Schooley or Dick and Francis. Thank you. And if there are any announcements, I will turn it over to the pool. Thank you. Did you tell you also that you're looking good? <laughs> So long, I forgot your name. <laughs> Not all became you, 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 some man your age, and you need.
morning. Maybe I should not come out because it's a little heavy this morning. I don't want to get my due done, so I'll be careful. I won't come out. And, you know, we make all kinds of excuses. And that's why it's so good when, when God allows us to, to come together. Right, Peter? We, we come together in fellowship and thank God. And we sit there and want to, want to keep Gurley and family in, in prayer, the loss of a brother. Uh, we want to, and that was just recently. I don't look around, some of y'all look around, who's Gurley? That's, that's the one right over, right, right, right over here. I don't know what would happen if we had a 500 member church. <laughs> 10 folks and we can't remember, who's that one? Who's that? But we want to stay in contact and, and be encouraged one another. You sure fooled me when you come up with that song that you almost act like you was doing something to you. <laughs> I like that, I like that song. That's a great way to, uh, to, to start in, in, in worship as, as well. We got events coming up. We want to keep all these things in mind that are going to come up during the month. Some of y'all know uh, me and uh, Sister Thomas will be taking a short hiatus uh, here. On probably on Wednesday. Uh, that's not the time to go be visiting. I heard the choir sing, I go to the rock, and I said, wait a minute. <laughs> you know you go to Mount Moriah, but I go to the rock. I said, uh-oh. But it, anyhow, that's the time to see how strong we are. Yeah, any of our uh, members are off for a while. But we're going we're gonna to take a much needed uh, vacation and accomplish some things as well in, uh, uh, in, in Detroit. And thank God we can, they say, entrust things to reliable people. I think Timothy 2 2 uh, that are apt to teach. That attitude, and that means also to strengthen one another. And we got some people in here that can just downright strengthen other people. And many times that's what our calling is in the Lord. We encourage to be an encourager to, some, to somebody else. And when you do that, you, you get fulfilled in, in your ministry, whatever it is, that God will, will, will bless you in so many, so many ways. Uh, did we mention an announcement? I didn't see anybody come up from uh, Jubilee's meeting today. Okay. Y'all, y'all meeting at Sister Thomas' house? Yes. Hmm. I'm in, I'm invited. Okay. I noticed she when, when I say her house, when it comes time to, to clean it up and put it in the water. <laughs> Then it's her house. In my house, when she's finished, amen. Hey, hey, just trying to teach some of us men something. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. All right, all right. I'm just feeling so good to the Lord. I want to take this opportunity to take up our tithes and offering. And that itself should be a time of rejoicing. Uh, it all goes together, it fits together when you look at the goodness of God and you look at, at some scriptures say, how can we repay the Lord for the many things that he has done for us? And we have to be careful in what God has said in his word, what he expects us to do, and not to come up with some alternate plan and then come up with those famous words that God knows my heart. That's why God keeps working on us, because yeah. he knows our heart. Right. So we want to be those who are able to give as God has said so. And then you have to believe what he said he will do. And to be honest, it took a while sometimes to, to, to look when I was growing up and how to look at God's going to do this. Don't God know that my rent's doing I'm, I'm, I'm a few weeks behind and Landlord is always charging me a little extra when I don't pay on time. My car's not, my car's acting up. I tried to tape the hoses that were leaking, but I'm going through some things. But God says he wants to go through those things with you. 
and he'll show you how to get through when you put him first in everything that you do. So the ushers are passing the basket forward at this time.
going to come forward. Hallelujah. And I want you to be praying for the preacher as she comes up today. I know that she has a word from God. She is an awesome woman of God. She sets the example for all of us. Not just women, but women and men on how you should be as a member of the body of Christ. She just happens to be married to Deacon Cooley. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And besides from giving a word that always moves our heart and our minds and stirs us to think, this sister can cook. She can throw down. Amen. Many days the pastor and I have been over there to her mother's house, just laid out. Hallelujah, stretched out on a snooze. <laughs> Amen. But I want to introduce to you none other than our very own. And let's greet her with a hearty amen. amen. Reverend Cheryl Cooley. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap for the woman of God. Come on, y'all. Give God a hand clap. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? We had kind of a rough start. Cooley couldn't find his wallet. I have to, I have to apologize for being late, honey. So we're looking for his wallet. But we found it. Well, he found it because he said, just go, just go without me. He found his wallet. We're both here. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love, for your mercy. Thank you for your understanding and your kindness. Thank you for seeing everyone here through whatever it is they've been through this week. Because we know, Heavenly Father, that you are the one. Yeah. The author and finisher of everything. And we should not dismay. Amen. Amen. Fear not. Sounds like there's been a lot of stuff going on this week with folks, myself included. Does anybody know the top five things that children are afraid of? Dark is number one. Death is number two. Spiders, number three. I can throw some adults in there. <laughs> Needles, oh my goodness. Oh, yes, my oh, granddaughter, yes. and I just didn't understand. It was like, you know, they're like, well, can you cover her eyes? Can you talk to her? Can you hug her? None of it worked. Uh, thunderstorms. Thunderstorms. The top five things that adults are afraid of. Well, a few years back was, what, needles? Yes, sir. Uh, Spiders. A few years back, it was terrorist attacks. Everybody was afraid that they were going to be attacked. And the way things are going now, we're not so far from that, amen? Um, adults are afraid of snakes. Yes, Lord. Adults are also afraid of spiders. Yes, yes. And death goes further down the line for the adults, that's number four. And then heights. Yes. Adults are afraid of heights. I hear all these affirmations for what I'm saying here. And my next question is, what are you afraid of? Spiders. <laughs> the unknown. 
because we're both, we're all going through a transition right now with the unknown, not knowing what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, who's going to be here, what's going to change. Well, come on, um, Are you afraid of failure? Is there anyone who's afraid of rejection? <coughs> afraid of loss? Afraid of change? You'd be surprised that some people are afraid of discovery. We are in a spirit of discovery now for who Mount Moriah can be, how strong we can be, how far we can go. Just discovering who we can be in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Some folks are afraid of discomfort. Fear knocks at our door and our hearts every day. We make the choice to open the door and let it in. Sometimes it just creeps up on you. You don't know all of a sudden. Right there. Why is it so easy to be fearful? Why don't we have more courage? We need more courage for this transition. We need more courage in our daily lives. We need more courage. Our human nature is to be fearful. We see things from our limited perspective and encounter life through our limited strength. This is why we grow fearful. Fear always seems to be a way of life for some folks. Well, it's like they just operate in the spirit of fear. They have lived so long dealing with fear that they believe it's the norm. But God tells us again and again and again, do not be afraid. <laughs> Mark 6, 45-51. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida. While he dismissed the crowd, after leaving them, he went up on a mountainside to pray. When evening came, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and he was alone on the land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars, because the wind was against them. About the fourth watch of the night, he went out to them, walking on the lake. He was about to pass them. But when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. We can replace that word with fear. Immediately, he spoke to them and said, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And then he climbed into the boat with them. The wind died down, and they were completely amazed. The disciples had already experienced a fierce storm of the Sea of Galilee previously. Many think that these storms are the same event. These are two different storms on two different days. Different days cause different storms that we all need to face. Amen? Storms of life toss us around, tear us up trouble our spirits. The first storm for the disciples created a spirit of panic and distress. The second storm generated a sense of fear and despair. Maybe the disciples were thinking, not now, not again. Our attitude often seems to look at recurring problems, thinking, here we go again, and that's when fear starts to set in, it starts to mess with your mind. Fear's been around forever. Fear originated in the Garden of Eden. Before Adam and Eve sinned, there was no fear. Can you imagine a world without fear? Can you imagine? Oh, I'm encouraged by that, imagining a world without fear. There was no reason to be afraid. There was nothing to be afraid of. No stress, no anxiety. Life in the garden was free of all those things. The moment of disobedience 
becomes their first taste of fear. In response to their fear, they hid from God. Fear is a byproduct of sin. Fear flows from the dominion of sin. Now, how many times have you done something wrong and turned away from the Lord? How many times have you feared, it's like, oh, you know God sees all and knows all. He's right there. But in our limited thinking, we think we may have gotten away with something. We think, well, maybe God didn't see that. Ha, 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 ha. Yes, he did. The promise of Christ is that he will make the world new again. Everything that was a result of the fall will be reversed. Amen. Jesus will remove the nature of fear from creation once and for all. I myself cannot wait for that. Fear will cease to exist. Our human nature will be redeemed and the world will be set right. The nature of Eden will be restored and every reason to live in fear will be removed. We try to hide from God. We try to avoid the consequences of sin. We try, try, we try to hide the fact that we have sin. And sin means that we've done wrong and everyone has done something at some point in their lives. No one is free from the reality of sin and from the grim reality of fear. The more that we drift in our relationship with God, the more likely we are to experience fear. But there are times when you are strong in the Lord. Yeah. You are strong in the Lord. Mm -hmm. yes, and that fear creeps right back in. That's right. We have to know that we will never be able to um, overcome our spirit of fear without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. God wants to set us free from the bondage of fear. Yes. Fear drains you of your faith. Fear and faith will never be compatible. When we live in a state of fear, we cannot live in faith. Our faith gives us strength to uh, gives us strength on a daily basis, but fear will sap that strength right out of our lives. Fear removes the spirit of courage from us and replaces it with alarm. The more often we give in to fear, the more difficult, difficult it becomes to live with courage. Courage is not an absence of fear, but an overcoming of fear. No one is immune to the influence of fear. This week has been extremely stressful. Come on, breathe it out. Take your time, Lord. Take your time. Coming home from Bible study on Wednesday, my mother and me and the baby were sideswiped by a van. We were in the car, we're driving home from Bible study, we're just having a conversation, driving along in my rear view mirror, and we're on the freeway, I'm in the third lane, 65 miles an hour, and my mirror, I see this big white van, like, it, and I have a little car, Hondas are little cars, I'm low to the ground. And this car just seemed huge, this van just seemed huge looming up next to us. And my first thought was, is this man getting ready to hit me? And then it did. So we get sideswiped. We're in the middle of the freeway. We're going 65 miles an hour. The vehicle that hit us slows down. We can't stop. We're on the freeway. There's cars to the right of us, cars behind us, cars in front of us. We have to be, keep going 65 miles an hour. I don't have time to be, uh, oh my gosh, somebody just, I don't have time for that. I need to keep going. I need to keep moving. I need to stay focused. 
so we can stay alive. So I continue to drive. And I drive until I feel finally there's a place where I can pull over. And then that still wasn't safe because I'm still on the freeway. Cars are flying by. I felt more I felt more fear when I got out of my car to check my car than I did when the van hit me. Or hit us, I should say. So I'm looking, it doesn't look like a lot of damage, it doesn't look like a lot is done to the car, the baby's okay, mom's okay. The vehicle that hit us continued past us. So now we got a hit and run. Get back in the car, drive my mother home, me and the baby get home. Still hasn't hit me. Rufus, did you call the police? I didn't know. I just wanted to get home. I just wanted to get home. But the next day, fear set in. I had sense enough on the freeway, Mom, the number of that van is 47479. I will always remember that number. The number of that van is 47479. It is an AMR vehicle. So that morning, after I slept, I got up, looked it up, found them. They're right here on Balboa Avenue. Did anybody know that? So my plan was, I am going to call my insurance company, get that. I'm going to go down to AMR and let them know what happened. But then a strange thing happened. I went to get in my car. How many of you have ever had an accident, been hit? I went to get in my car and the spirit of fear engulfed me. I started crying and I'm shaking and I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? The spirit of fear. The Lord does not want us to operate in a spirit of fear. And I knew this and I said this. It's like, Lord, I can't operate in the spirit of fear. Turn the key, get out of the driveway and drive. Okay. Strengthen with that word. Then, the closer I got to the place where the vans were, I hit 15, which is where the accident was on, and immediately, another sense of anxiety, sense of fear. It's like, I can't operate like this. I have to, I have to get past this. Lord, help me. Lord, help me get past this. And there was one little section on 15, when I hit 15 where all of a sudden this overwhelming sense of anxiety came. And I'm, I'm being real. Yeah, I'm telling y'all what's going on in life yeah. that sometimes we have to deal with. And no matter how many times I stand up here and preach, no matter how, how many people I minister to, we all go through it. Amen? Amen. And I got to the place, and then I, of course, their vans are parked there, so another sense of anxiety came, because in my brain is this image of this vehicle coming next to me. But fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Yes. My husband came with me. He wasn't in my car, but he followed me. <laughs> and we get to the place, and I tell them that one of their vehicles sideswiped me the southbound 15 last night between 8.30 and 8.45. I think I gave them too much information. So the guy's looking, he says, well, I don't have a report. Oh, you don't? Well, that van is out right now. Oh, it is? As a matter of fact, the incident that happened at UCSD, that's where the, the vans were with the construction workers. So he's given me information unknowingly. I let him know what I knew. I need your insurance. I wasn't waiting for my insurance company to get it. 
I went down there and got it. They're like, okay, you got it, you can leave. I left. I felt better. I made it home. But then it came time for me to pick up the baby. Once again, this spirit of fear came over me. And I'm just praying, Lord, help me, Lord, help me. I cannot operate this like this. I cannot think like this. So for the past four days, it's been, if, if I'm, first I didn't want to drive. <laughs> and when I did, a white car passes me. Maybe I should get in the fast lane so nobody's on my, on my left side. But then if I have somebody in the car, then they're on the right side. And just all of these thoughts and all of these things were working against me. But God has not given us a spirit of fear. Fear not. Fear not. So much so that preparing for today was a struggle. Do I share? Do I not share? Y'all know how I am. It's like whatever goes on in my life, I'm up here talking about it because somebody else is going to deal with this too and that's just how I see it. I call it application. How did I apply the word of God to my life? How did I apply what I was going through so that I could get through? I haven't completely made it to the other side. But working on this sermon about fear is encouraging. Working on this sermon about fear is to help me as much as it is to help anybody else who's going through here today. We all have challenges. We all have fears. We all go through something. But fear not. You know, fear is one of the most powerful tactics that works against our faith. Satan doesn't want anyone to live a lifestyle of bold faith. When we live in faith, we live above the bondage of fear. That doesn't mean it's not going to come. That doesn't mean it's not going, you're not going to experience it. That doesn't mean you're not going to see others in fear. But we live above the bondage of fear. We have something to reach up to, something to go for, and not stay in that fear. Satan will do anything and everything to keep us in a state of anxiety and fear. And throughout the week, these thoughts kept coming to my brain. You know, the what ifs. What if it wasn't just a side swipe? What if? The Lord protected me in that moment because the only word I allowed myself to use for that incident was side swipe. Okay. That was the only word I allowed myself to use. Side swipe. It's like, okay. We didn't get knocked over. Nobody got hurt. Physically. <coughs> Mom's okay. Baby's okay. Side swipe. You mean you got an accident on the freeway? You mean you got that? No, side swiped. I was side swiped. That was my saving grace. That was my way to, to push through because I was side swiped. I didn't have an accident on the freeway. We do what we have to do to make it through. Fear not. No one is immune to the influence of fear. There will be times in life when we experience fear, but we do not have to be overcome by fear. Mark states that the disciples were terrified. This is not a normal or ordinary fear, but rather is fear of the deepest level, terrified. There were two main reasons that the disciples were filled with fear. The first was the storm that they were dealing with, and the second was the ghost. The disciples saw Jesus walking on the water and became terrified. Uh -huh. Now everybody in here, I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. But if he appeared right here before us, some would be terrified. Right. 
They believed that Jesus was a ghost. The Greek word is phantismo, where we get our word phantasm. The word was used to describe the vilest of evil spirits. So they likened Jesus' appearance to the vilest of evil spirits instead of fear not. Come on now. Now remember, they had just feeding the 5,000. They just been through the feeding the 5,000 and they've seen all these miracles and it's like, whoo! But how soon we forget. The disciples believed that what they saw coming out of the storm was an evil spirit. Fear made them see something that was not there. Fear this week was making me see things that were not there. Fear caused them to almost miss the miracle happening in front of them, Jesus walking on water. Sometimes fear will paralyze us into action. Sometimes fear will prevent us from living in faith. Sometimes fear will promote discouragement within us. But never forget that Jesus stands with us in our fear. Just like he was with them on the water. They were afraid when he was there. I was afraid when he was there. Yes, yes. Because the what if they, things could have been worse. It could have been an accident. Yes. We could have been in the hospital right now and y'all would have been at Shark visiting us. Yes. Yes. Having service at the hospital. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Notice that Jesus speaks into the fears of the disciples. He knows they are afraid. And look at what he says. Take Courage. courage. Take courage. Yes. It is I. I. Yes. Don't be afraid. Yes. Don't be afraid. Jesus speaks to the storm. Yes. He speaks it to the fear. He takes the teeth out of the terror. He removes the power from the fear, which was the storm. The power was removed from the fear when I got in the car. The power, the, the power of the fear continued to be removed the more I drive, the more I got in the car. Now I got to get, just have to get to the point of putting people in the car. I haven't got there yet. But it's coming. Fear not. When we go through times that would generate fear, Jesus speaks to us. It is I. I am here. Jesus stands with us. Even when the storm overwhelms us, Jesus stays with us. Even when the storm scares us, Jesus strengthens us. Even when the storm weakens us, because sometimes it will. But how does Jesus bring calm to the chaos? He comes beside us. He brings his presence into the midst of our fear. He stands with us, he walks with us, he speaks to us, but you gotta be still long enough to listen and to hear. Yes. Jesus comes into our chaos to provide a sense of clarity, and he brings us a sense of calm. Jesus gives us courage, even in the most fearful situations. I believe that's exactly what he did when I was on that freeway. I did not panic, I did not scream, I did not cry. He even gave me a, uh, sure, oh, somebody's about to hit you. He gave me a heads up. Not that you're not gonna get hit, but that somebody's about to hit you. Now, act like you got some sense. Bring it down, bring it down. He floods our spirit with his strength and lifts us up in his power. Jesus infuses our fear with his fearlessness. Yes. He gives supernatural strength for our human moments of weakness. I can't imagine that Jesus was here on earth as a human still having the power. What would you
you have dealt with that? Okay, I'm not going to go there to the side. Jesus said, be encouraged because I am here. Be encouraged because you are not alone. Be encouraged because I am stronger than that storm. I'm stronger than that man. I'm stronger than that boss. I'm stronger than your neighbor. Be encouraged because I am God. Jesus brings the presence of God into our lives. Jesus tells the disciples to take courage. But why? Remember, the words that follow of are amazing. The words that follow are of amazing importance. At first glance, this doesn't seem incredibly significant. However, with closer examination, the words are echoing a previous event in Scripture. Jesus is really saying, take courage because I am. He's drawing the disciples back to the calling of Moses at the burning bush. It's here that God tells his personal name for the first time, Yahweh. I am that I am. In the fear of God's call, God gives Moses a promise. I am. And I will be with you. The very name Yahweh speaks of his presence with Moses and with us today. He promises that he will be there when we need him. This is the truth that Jesus speaks to the disciples. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Believe that. Walk with that. Carry that. Hold on to that. Write it on a piece of paper. Put it in your pocket. Jesus echoes the call of God to the disciples. He proclaims the person of God. Jesus makes a bold claim, here I am. God. The same God who called Moses is here with you. The same God who shut the mouths of the lions is here with you. The same God who defeats giants is here with you. The same God who brings the dead to life is here with you. In the midst of their greatest fears, Jesus says, I am here. Do not be afraid. Jesus speaks to us in the midst of our fears. It is I. I am here. I am with you. You are not alone. No matter how much you're into it, no matter how much you think the Bible experience, anything that you're thinking, you are not alone. Jesus stands with us even when those storms seem overwhelming. Jesus stays with us even when the storm scares us. And Jesus strengthens us when that storm weakens us. None of us are strong all the time. We all need to be energized. We all need a little something. We all need a little push. We all need a little word of encouragement. Pastor said that today. Encouragement. He also talked about the trials and tribulations. So I know it's not just me. Pastor mentioned that folks are going through this week. This isn't just for me. This is for all of us. What fear has you in its grip today? What terror tactic is the enemy using against you? What do you need to give over your strength to Jesus? It's not on our own, it's with Jesus. It's with the strength of God that you make it through and the promises of God 
I will never leave you nor forsake you. Today, saints, is a day to stop living in fear and anxiety and stress. It's not going to do anything but make you sick. Today is the day to start living in faith over fear. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for this word. I thank you. Mm, thank you. I just thank you, Lord. I just thank you. I just love you so much. You continue to lead me and guide me and show me and, and, and give me word to share. And sometimes I think it's selfish, but Lord, I know it's something I'm supposed to share with others. I just thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you for this church. I thank you for everyone here at Mount Moriah. I pray too, Lord, for those others who have gone through this week. For those others who have struggled, Heavenly Father, that they know that you are our strength. Yes. You are who we turn to. You are the one that we can lean on. Yes. It's light for you. It's like a feather. And we give it to you, Heavenly Father. We just pass it on to you. We promise not to hold on to these things. We promise not to carry these things with us. We promise to pass these things on to others. In Jesus' righteous and holy name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Is there anyone here who does not know the Jesus that I speak of? Is there one, anyone here that doesn't know that he's your strength and he's your salvation and he can get you through whatever it is you're going through? Whatever it is you're going through, he can get you through. If I had the words, I'd follow you saying and sometimes you have to encourage yourself. I'm, I'm not telling you to sing that. But it's in my brain right now and I don't know the words, so we're not going there. Yes, sometimes you have to encourage yourself in the Lord. Amen. Amen. As the choir sings, won't you come?
in. Somebody in here needs some prayer. Somebody in here is struggling more than I was this week. Somebody in here needs some prayer. If you need prayer, just come on up because we have ministers and reverends and deacons who would love nothing more than to hold your hand and say a prayer of salvation to, to guide you through. That's why God has put us here to help you. He helps us help each other. Amen? Yeah. Is there anyone here who needs a word of prayer this morning? Anyone that needs a word of prayer this morning, please step forward. Because the power wants to put you back together again. Amen? Yeah. I would like to call up my ministers, our ministers. I'm sorry, you don't belong to me. You belong to God. I would like to call up our ministers. Please come so we can pray. <laughs> the Father wants to put us back together again. Amen. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. So if you are broken, if you are broken hearted, if you are discouraged, if you can't find your way, the Father wants to put you back and he's going to do it right now, today, amen? He wants to put you back together. There's a breakthrough coming today. There is a breakthrough. If all of you can gather around these two, these two men here, we put you in the center. Put you in the center. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's where I'm going to put you back, amen? The problem wants to put you back, amen? The problem wants to put you back, amen? Ministers, gather around those who were asking for prayer. Let's put a hedge of protection around them, amen? A hedge of protection around those who are asking for prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, we may not know what it is you come forward for, but we know you come forward, Heavenly Father. We know you're reaching out to God. We know that there's something in your heart, something on your mind, something that has to be released, something that has to be removed, Heavenly Father. And we're asking right now in the name of Jesus that anything that is not of him be removed from the top of your head to the bottom of your toes, that you walk in Christ, you walk in Him, you live in Him, you be in Him, that whatever it is that you're going through, you don't have to go through it alone. Christ is there for you. Jesus is there for you. He's going to walk with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He loves you. He loves you more than you can love yourself. And He will see you through whatever it is. He always has and He always will. Just know that you're not standing alone. He's right there beside you holding your hand along the way and he will lead you and guide you and continue to do that until you go home to him heavenly father oh we thank you lord we just thank you heavenly father for these spirits who have come forth we may not know what it is heavenly father but we gather here together like-minded to lift them up to you lord to lift them up to give them strength heavenly father to gird them up be a hedge of protection around them, Heavenly Father. Be a fence around them so they can move and go and be who it was, who it is you will have them to be, Lord. We just thank you. We thank you, Lord. And we bless your name and we praise your name, Heavenly Father. We praise you. We praise you, Lord. In your righteous and holy, 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 holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank God.
your mercy. Thank you for your grace, Lord. There's so much going on right now. And I'm just asking that we not hold on to it. Don't hold on to it. You don't have to go through this by yourself. Mount Moriah is a family. We're a family. You don't have to hold on to anything. You don't have to keep anything for yourself. You're not supposed to. We're supposed to gird each other up. We're supposed to strengthen one another. We're supposed to stand with one another in times of sorrow, in times of tragedy, in, in times of, of uncertainty. We are there for one another, but I don't know you need me unless you reach out. I don't know you need me unless you talk to me. He won't know you need him unless you talk to him. Don't hold on to this. Give it to Jesus. And Jesus put us in your lives. Jesus put us in your life to support you, to help you, to carry you through whatever it is you're going through. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And his evidence of that is everyone sitting in this congregation. Everyone sitting in this congregation. You are never alone. Stop holding on to that stuff because that's exactly what Satan wants you to do. Let it go. Tell somebody. Pray with somebody. Go to somebody. Gather with the saints so that you too can be relieved of what it is that's holding you back and holding you down. We can't go through life like this. God put us here for a reason. We're all together for a reason. This isn't just a, this is a reason. There's a reason. Utilize what God has put in front of you. Because if you don't, you're going to suffer. And no one needs to suffer alone. No one needs to suffer alone. If there's anyone else, anyone else, who needs prayer this morning, please touch and agree with one of the ministers of the deacons. Because you do not have to do this on your own. No more secrets. No more lies. We love each other. We care about each other. We look after each other. We'll save benevolence for second service. And if there's nothing else, all the saints stand.